new top end, bunch of new comfort pieces, but what good is that for you if you spit driveline pieces out all over the trail? We're gonna fix that. Stay tuned. Hey everyone, it is Josh with Motorcycle and Power Sports News, and thanks for tuning in this week because we are gonna cover the drivetrain. Now, there's a couple of things in this. We've, as I've said, we've done the top end, we've taken care of a lot of accessories and stuff like that, but if you're out on the trail and you spit a drive shaft out, well, then all those other things aren't gonna do you a whole lot of good. That being said, we're gonna do a couple of the U-joints in this. There are some of these that are loose, so it's time to replace them. Now this is what allows a shaft of any sort to go around a corner. So we are gonna replace these. On top of that, CV boots. These are what keep the grease in, the muck, the dirt, the grime, and everything else that's nasty out of those CV joints. Those axles, they're expensive to replace. So if you've got even a small tear in a boot, it's time to pull that axle apart, replace the boot, freshen it up with new grease, and you'll probably be able to get some more life out of it yet. So that being said, we are gonna dive into the rear axle on this. Pull the tire off. In that, we're gonna pull this rear prop shaft. So this U-joint up front here, it's gonna be tough to see. I'll show you guys better when we pull it out, is loose and a lot of clunking going on there. So in order to do that, there's no way to get the shaft out without moving the rear differential back a little bit. So the first thing that we want to do is there is a roll pin up here. We're going to want to knock those roll pins out. Then we're going to want to take the differential loose so we can slide that back a little bit. And then we can go ahead and pull the drive shaft out. Now we've got the roll pin out of there. Next up is we're gonna to have to be able to slide the differential back so that we've got enough room to pull the shaft out of the transmission and off of the differential. That being said, there are two bolts up top and one here on the bottom. There's the same thing up front. There's two up top, one in the bottom. There's also two that come up from underneath. We'll get all of those out. We'll pull the differential back and that'll let us get the drive shaft out so then we can start replacing those usual. So I've got the upper bolts out here, the lower one here. You're able to kind of get this back one here, but in order to get the front one on the top, we're gonna need to pull this top of the strut away so that way we can get better access to it. On the bottom here, there is that bolt down here. We're gonna need to pull both of the lower control arm bolts, one on either side here. That way we can just pull the lower control arm out a little bit and then we can get access to that. Shouldn't be a big deal. Just the next couple of bolts to pull out. Now I've got all the bolts out. Basically what we want to do is we want to pull this differential back a bit so that way we've got space. Hope you heard that noise. That was the drive, that was that front or uh, the uh, rear prop shaft dropping out there. So now that it's off of this, we can go ahead and pull that out of there. Take it over to the press, start working on the U-joints. Now, something that I always do first thing whenever I pull a drive shaft out is I label the front, and I'm also gonna label the rear, and I typically etch it in with something like this because I find markers and that'll just come off. On top of that, I label both sides of the U-joint, you typically wanna assemble these in the same way that they came apart. You don't wanna assemble it 180 degrees out. Sometimes that can cause a vibration. I just wanna make sure that it goes back together the same way it came apart. So these U-joints are held together in a couple of ways. So. You want to be really careful if you ever take these apart because there is probably 30 or 40 little needle bearings in there and that's what allows this to roll. 
So that being said, the way these go together is it comes, it gets pressed together through this joint, and then once you have it all together, these circlips go on. Well, to take it apart, we need to dig those circlips out. In a lot of cases, they actually settle a little bit into the U-joint, so it occasionally helps to give a couple of wraps with a hammer and a socket on, on one of these, so that way you can push that circlip down and out of the yoke enough that you can get a hook on it, pop that circlip out, it's probably gonna fly across the shop. If you can keep it, keep it. It's always good to have spares of those, but get those circlips out, then we're gonna work on going over to the press to press the U-joint out of itself and to get it out of the yoke. So now really we just need to push that through there. And you can see this starts to come out. So we'll press this down a little bit further. We're probably gonna to need to put something in there as a small spacer, but we'll press this down a little bit further so that way this cap comes out. Then we'll be able to pull the U-joint out of the yoke. So uh, that, I believe, uh, looks like the problem. I would go with lack of lube. Make sure we put lube on, plenty of lube on these next ones. So we got the old one out. As you can tell by the fact that it's rusty and nasty. There's the new one here. Now I've got the caps off of it. Now what we want to do is we slide the plus basically in the center there. And now what we're going to do is we're just going to stick the caps on each end. Push them in as far as you can with your thumb. Now there's a couple of ways to put this on the rest of the way. A, you can use the press. B, you can just use a hammer and tap them in lightly because they should slide in fairly easily. You set this on the ground and you're probably in good shape. Just make sure that you hit all around the outside of it. We don't want to damage anything in here. I would typically use a block of wood with this, but make sure the whole time that it's moving in that you've got good, smooth movement here, which we do. That tells us that everything is lined up and we're in good shape. So you do it for this. Obviously, we're gonna do the same thing when we put this yoke on. We're gonna replace this one also. Put it back together. So now that we've got half of this done already, Literally, the other half is the same way. It's, it's just a case of sliding the yoke over top of the, the uh, U-joint itself. And you've got stuff fairly straight. Go ahead and put the cap on. Flip it over, line it up. Do the same thing on that side. Once you got the caps in, go ahead and put the clips in. Remember, these are a spring clip and they're gonna take the express trip across the garage if you're not careful. So, that's why we save the old ones too. But, first off, we're gonna go to the press. So U-joints are in, clips are in, time to put it back in the quad. Now, if you remember right, I etched in which one's the front and which one's the back. This has F, where is it? This one has R, so front, rear. So that is the way we're gonna put them in. Now, before we do this, there is one key in order to make sure that we get long life out of these things. Make sure that we put the Zerk fitting in, which is right here. That allows us to put grease in there. Make sure you pump it up just until you start to see the boots expand. As soon as you start to see all four of the boots expand, you know you've got it filled with grease. You're in good shape. If you keep going past that point, some cases that can open it up for a little bit of leakage and water and other grit to get in. Pump it up until the boots start to expand and you're good from there. Now, on top of that, I typically, when I've gone out for a ride and if it gets wet or anything of that nature in mud, 
I will typically come back and make sure that you hit these guys again with some grease just to make sure that you've got them filled up. With these Zerk fittings, it's pretty simple. It takes a 5 16 inch wrench and you screw it in there. Now these are already threaded which is really nice so you can start them there, put the wrench on, thread it in, then put your grease gun on it. Got the Zerk fittings in, we've got it greased up. Now, the big thing with this, and it's sometimes difficult, is making sure that you get this roll pin lined up. So, I usually start with the front shaft, because that one's stable. Um, I'll put that on, and sometimes it takes two or three tries to make sure that you get it on, so that this hole lines up with the roll pin. Now, this one does not have a roll pin in the rear differential shaft here. Some of them do. So that raises that level of difficulty also. This case, we're kind of lucky that it doesn't have it. So that's why I'm gonna make sure that I've got it on the front end. If it does have it on both, it's just a case of making sure that you got them all lined up. Front part of the shaft is on. Now, I'm not gonna put that roll pin in. I can see I've got it lined up and you can use like a small screwdriver or something like that the test to make sure that you have it lined up. But to have some leeway in being able to slide this around a little bit helps out quite a bit when you're trying to get it on the rear section here also. So I'm gonna leave the roll pin out. I'm gonna put it all together so it's loose. I'll put the roll pin in, then I'll move the differential in place and start putting those bolts back in. Drive shaft is in, differential is all locked back down. That being said, we're gonna put the rear tire back on because we're gonna do the front CV boot. Front wheel and tire off. To get the axle available so we can replace that boot is actually pretty simple. What we need to do is we need to pull this hub off We'll really need to get the ball joint off and we'll need to get the tie rod end of the way. That way we can pick this assembly off. We'll have perfect access to basically the whole CV shaft here. So let's get to that. So now I've got the lower control arm off, got the tie rod loose, we've got this so it can swing around and get out of the way for us. That being said, push on the shaft. So now that we've got the shaft out, we're going to replace this outer boot here. Now you can do the inner boot the same way. We're going to show it once you have this outer assembly off, but we're going to show you that for starters on this. That being said, there is a clamp that holds the boot down on the outside here and on the inboard side. You pry this end up, that allows that to come loose, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull that boot back so we can get this CV joint apart. So this is what an inside of a CV joint looks like. And when you look at the grease in here, you can see that there's balls in here that allow it to move and still turn. So you can see why keeping this clean and dry and full of lube is a good reason on this and why you want to make sure that you maintain and stay up on these. Now, that being said, you can see that obviously the little ends are in there. So we have to get this U-joint off. What this requires is there's actually a small like snap ring inside of there that's basically it's a spring ring. 
So we'll find this race here with the, with the punch and we'll use that to tap on this and it'll allow us to slide this joint off of the shaft, then we can pull this boot off. I tried a few taps with the punch on the race, the dead blow hammer didn't work, so we're gonna need to use a slide hammer on this. Shouldn't take much, and on this also, wanna make sure that you hold this shaft so that way you're not pulling the inner CV joint out either. So, we'll give this a couple of taps, this should come right out. There we go. So when you look in here, this grease in it actually still looks pretty good. I'm not seeing any big chunks of dirt, I'm not seeing any metal flake or anything like that. So the grease in here is pretty good, but it still wouldn't be a bad idea to clean some of this up. And then that way we can make sure that when we're packing the new one, we're packing a bunch of good new grease in there. Now here, you can see this spring clip that we had to get around and over. That being said, we're also just gonna do this top boot here because it's super simple to do. We've already got everything apart, basically. We just gotta undo those two spring clips and then we'll start putting the new boot on that one. So, a couple of things when we open up the box. The first thing that you'll find, sometimes it's in with the bands in a bag, sometimes it's taped to the top of the box. We got an extra spring clip here. It's what goes on the end of the shaft because as we talked about before, saw sometimes with the U-joints, those springs can end up in the darkest, deepest corner of your garage or shop or in the lawn. You're never gonna find them again. So that way, that way there's a spare here. There is a new boot in here. On this model, the inner and outer are different. So we'll get to those in a second. There are the clamps. There's the clamp for the big end. There's a clamp for the little end. And there is a bag of grease that we are gonna wanna fill that boot up with, so that way we make sure that we've got plenty of fresh grease in there. So, first things first, let's get the boot slid on most of the way, then we'll pack it full of grease, then we're gonna go ahead and put the clamps on. If you look on the shaft here, there is a groove right in here, and there's another one up here. So there's a lip on the inside of these boots, and that's where that is gonna seat. So we'll want to make sure that those areas are clean and ready to go. But right now, I'm going to slide the boot pretty much all the way up on. And then I am going to take the packet of grease right here. It's got a handy little tear tab. I'm going to tear that and we're going to squeeze it out like icing. It's getting ready to go on a birthday cake. We've got plenty of grease packed in here, or so you think. What we want to do is when we get about half of that in there, is we are going to want to rotate the shaft around a little bit. So that way we can make sure we've got the other side packed full too. As you saw, there are a special pair of pliers for these clamps. They work really well. It's a case of making sure you're in the groove. There's teeth on the bottom of this that go into these holes. When you get those in there, you pinch it together and that's what clamps down on the boot. That being said, when you do these, just get them in as tight as you can. You don't need to struggle with it that bad. Get them in. I sometimes will give it a little bit of a tap with a hammer like that, just to make sure that it's seated. Put the pliers on. And now that's tightened up. Boot slid on, 
Now let's go ahead and get this joint on. We've got all the grease in there. Make sure the splines line up. There we go. And because it took the slide hammer to get it off, it might take a couple of taps or something like this to get it back on. Now that we've got the new boots on, packed full of grease, time to get this thing back together so we can get out on the trail. Putting it back together is pretty simple. It's just the reverse of the way we pulled it apart. So we're gonna put the shaft back through the hub assembly, reattach the tie rod, reattach the ball joint, throw the wheel spacer on the wheel, and we'll be good to go. Make sure that you torque everything correctly with that also. Two new CV boots, a couple of new U-joints. The drive line on this is fresh and ready to go. That all being said, one of our last episodes here with this version of Project X. Now we've got a few other things in the works here. One of which, we've got some dress up and a few other little items that we're gonna to touch up with this thing before we do our final big reveal, which is gonna be on a live stream. Check out the information. We'll have that coming soon for you. On top of that, I mentioned we've got some other Project X stuff in the pipeline. Stay tuned, make sure you subscribe, make sure you follow along because I think there's gonna be a lot more great stuff, probably a different vehicle involved. There's a few things we've got in mind with that. That all being said, I wanna thank everyone for tagging along. As I mentioned, like, subscribe. If you've got a question, do me a favor, put it in the comments. And now, it's gonna be real soon. I'm gonna see you out on the trip.